How's everyone going? Welcome back to another Model Railway review video. Um, we're back on uh, on Kamen vlogs, uh, not vlogs, uh, railway reviews videos, empty mile railway. Um, so yeah, another model today. You already know that, seen the title, so you should already know what it is. I love how the focus is dying out because I'm record. It's recording just a black um, panel, which, uh, which is always great. Oh well, anyhow, so today we, you already know what we're doing, so time for another thing to the end scale, an end gauge collection. Alright, so, as the title already says, today we have a Kato, um, code number 10, 1700, uh, Series Zero. So this is a Series Zero Shinkansen, the original, basically one of the original um, types of um, uh, bullet train, which started, high, basically started the high speed, uh, the high speed rail movement. Uh, this is a 200 series, um, 200, 2000 series of the Series Zero. Um, it's the, uh, the Hakari uh, Kodama um, series. Uh, um, unit. So there's eight carriages. This is only pack A. Eventually we'll have um, we'll also have a look at pack B, uh, but that will be part of the um, review video, not the opening video. So it's it, again in uh, in Cardo's very nice um, box. I love these boxes. Um, I love the one that came with the um, 700 uh, for the uh, extra carriages. Uh, so and that's where I store the whole thing. So first things first, as usual, we have our Instruction manual and our uh, destination stick stickers, destination um uh, things whatever. Uh, come on, focus. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, so uh, car, uh, so just a whole lot of um information stickers that sticks onto the side of the uh, things, and we have our um, pretty a pretty standard. Uh, Mm, sorry, sorry about pushing the um, focus up and uh, the zoom in and out. It's just to get the focus working again. Um, pretty standard. This is also all available on their website, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Japanese website. So I also can't read any of this. So this is a uh, always brilliant, and it's good that they give us a part sheet at the at the back, so that if we ever need to order spare parts, um, they have the parts that are available for it. Uh, not that. Uh, Paying uh, 550 yen is going to make much sense for conversion rate, but oh well. Especially because uh, postage is going to be real fun. Uh, so again, another piece of um, bubble wrap which came same as the other pack actually. Had. All right, so we have our eight carriages. Uh, if I recall, it's I can't remember what numbers. We'll we'll take a look at the numbers as as we bring them out. So we'll bring out the first carriage. Uh, this is the obviously. Oh, Classic um, bullet train nose, unlike the new ones, which look a little bit different. Uh, the steel Shinkansen, who's just yeah, uses uh, some of the end gauges stand more standardized couplers, unlike what was found on the um, 700. Uh, it uses the which use its own spe uh, particular coupling to have basically it's like a close coupling. But yeah, so there we go. Uh, this is carriage number one. So put that over there. Carriage number two, I think it's carriage two. Yes, carriage two also has a little panograph on the top. Should be able to extend it if I recall. It's very, very. It's obviously a very delicate little thing to have to put a panograph up. Uh, there will be close-up shots which I would have put on the um, shot now. But so yeah, that's carriage two. Carriage number three, I think it was. Yep, carriage three. It's just a standard carriage, nothing special, nothing too special with, uh, well, it's just, uh, in terms of the model side of it, as in there's no, um, there's no motor in it. We have carriage number four, which is also another Panagraph carriage. We have the weight one, carriage number nine, this has the motor. This will be able, should be able to power all 16 carriages, so... We have carriage number 12, also another Panagraph carriage. Carriage number 15. Uh, I probably can go have a read about what type of carriages these are supposed to be in real life, but in, uh, just before I fully start talking about them. And then final carriage number 16, which is also a Panagraph car. 
which is kind of interesting that they that does mean that both ends are had to be constructed slightly differently because one end has the counter graph and one end doesn't but there we go so let's put that down let's pack away the packaging let the um, carriage roll away and I'll see you all with the shots a little bit more a closer up Alright, so I guess we should start with me getting attacked by a bug behind the camera, which is always great, but that's beside the point. Um, getting our first impressions of the model. It has directional headlights, as um, you would have expected. Um, it's got a little bit of interior uh, interior detail I can see through the camera. Not, I can't really tell that much because of how small it is. Uh, and then, in, uh, and then it does have interior de a cabin inside de interior detail. We've got the um, all the seats and stuff um, fitted, so that's very very nice. And a little bit of undercarriage detail as well, for the fact that it's um, it's uh, one in five hundred scale. But yeah, so looks really yeah, really really nice. So the, as I say, um, when we spin it around to the back, uh, when we have a look at the back of the. Um, the coupling mechanism of them is they are fitted with um, standard uh, end gauge couplers uh, compared to the uh, 700 which was fitted with its own proprietary system uh, which had actually gangways which are also coupled up to make things look closer. In the cases of these ones they are still pretty close to each other so it doesn't look too bad having such a big coupler but uh, it's a little bit different when it comes to um, ro freight and rolling stock because of how uh, you need to actually be able to do shunting these ones as long as the train stays together. So that really works. So it's in JR. Well, actually, uh, before I even completely stuck myself up, it's in JR uh, JRN's uh, livery, if I recall, uh, which is the um, standard livery for, um, for for most of the. Um, Shinkansen Zero's 100 series and 200 series, and today still continues to be JR West and Central's uh, uh, livery for their Shinkansen's. So, oh yeah, so we're just gonna quickly just put the panograph carriage on to create a triangular form in the center of the um, screen to hopefully stop everything from uh, sliding off whenever I spin the thing we can see the details are really, really uh, again off to the same sort of quality uh, they seem pretty nice uh, very nice the panograph as I said does extend up like so uh, you've even got your very nice um printing so it actually says carriage number two looks very nice for a uh, such a little model uh, something very very nice to um I wish I to cannot wait to um, put on the tracks and see how she runs. But yeah. Alrighty then, so let's shift the camera a bit and let's go into a little bit of his brief history. So, the Shinkansen Series Zeros initially started operation in 1964. The first six. 12 carriage sets were built by Hitachi, with the rest of them built by various other Japanese manufacturers. They were originally operated in 12 carriage sets, but uh, beginning from 1969, uh, the first 30 sets of Shinkansen's were converted into 16 carriage sets to operate with the increased demand in passenger, pat uh, in passenger patronage. They have a max top speed of 220 kilometers an hour, and there were over 3,000 carriages uh, built. They were eventually replaced by the 300, 500, and 700 series Shinkansen's. At the time, the Shinkansen's were the first trains to operate, were the first major train in Japan to operate on standard gauge, because at the time. Uh, a lot of Japan was still using narrow gauge trains. They needed uh, they needed the larger gauge to predominantly so they could operate at a higher speed. The voltage was also stepped up to 25,000 volts and uh, at 60 hertz. Retirement of the uh, of the Shinkansen began. Uh, the final service to be operated by JR Central was in 1999, with the final service with JR West in 2008. 
they saw the end the, the end after 44 years of operation. Anyhow, with a little bit of base history, uh, more detailed uh, history will obviously be in the description and probably in the review video if I could be bothered by reading all this out again. Let's pick two carriages and have a look at those nice and closely before we jump over to the layout. Right, I'd, uh, so we're nice and close up. I do apologise with the fact that you can see that I'm using toothpicks to basically hold up the, um, hold, uh, stop the model from moving too much. Anyhow, so we can see its distinct bullet shaped nose, which was where he got the nickname. But yeah, we can see we have a lot of the stuff is molded for the size it is. Uh, we have got our, I think there's a radio aerial or something on the, <laughs> on the top. I'm pretty sure. Of course, someone can clarify that for me, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's used for radios usually. Well, at least that's what they use for in, on our trains in, in Australia. Uh, we have our. If we let's flick back over to the front. We have our two head, uh, two forward on headlights. These are both headlights and rear lights. Rear lights, uh, tail lights. So, so they they op uh, they operate based on the direction you're shoveling, obviously. And we've also got the, um, well obviously the nose doesn't come off on these, but the, um, on the real ones the nose would come off to expose the emergency coupler in case of, uh, they had to tow a, a Shinkansen somewhere with a, either another set or a, um, with a, in, if it was us, it would be diesel locomotives. So yeah. Spinning us around. We can uh, see slightly into the um, cabin area, you can see the seats. So, it's basically all, uh, it's a fully seat seated saloon uh, for the um, uh, driver's units. Uh, all wheels are powered on the real train, however on the model train it is only, only carriage number 9 which has power. However, I have noticed that all the carriages seem to have pickups, which I assume is for the lights. Um, and if you want to fit uh, extra uh, interior lighting, they would power up by the wheels as well. So there's that option that you can also add to it. On the uh, what do they call it? The the coupler end. Uh, I forgot what the corridor end. Uh, it's a little bit more basic. Everything's molded, but still looks decent. It's just uh, it doesn't have any sort of that close coupling effect like the um, series 700s. Sorry, 700As, uh, the 700 and the 700As are slightly different, so I have to make sure I keep myself clarified on that. And going on to the other side, pretty much all the same, we've got our, um, looks, what looks like a number on the side of the, um, carriage, uh, uh, which I assume is like, um, yeah, rolling stock number, 212002. Yeah, they look very, very nice. I would love to see one in real life. I do would like to go to Japan one day and actually take a look at um, some of these in real life. Unfortunately, I don't think any of them run anymore. I'm pretty sure they're all in museums and stuff, so at least we can get up nice and close to them. Uh, too bad we probably won't see them run, but uh, I'm not sure what Japan is like with their heritage trains. Of course, if, they, if you got, anyone knows anything about it, I would love to know. Um, because, like us, we have a lot of heritage railways, uh, which we run diesels, and uh, and we even have mainline heritage stuff, so I'm not sure, 100% sure if they're allowed to run these on the mainline anymore. Seeing they operate at 220 kilometers an hour, compared to somewhat faster uh, as you can sense nowadays. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Alright, so I'm just going to pick this up, and then um, we're going to flick over to our next carriage of um, to have a detailed look at. And of course it will be the Panagraph carriage, which is, um, because we get to have a look at the Panagraph, obviously. Um, again, same sort of details on the uh, on the couple of ends, which is pretty, uh, pretty much expected. Um, but yeah, so pretty much everything else is semi the same. I'm not really too sure what I'm looking at, honestly. Because uh, it's just an amazement looking at something uh, which is... Decently mo well, it's actually very modern for a um, for nineteen uh, for the nineteen sixties. Uh, but yeah, we have our uh, our twin arm panograph, which um, all the uh, all the Shinkansen zeros, one hundreds, and two hundreds all used. Um, 
they finally went to single arm pans after um the, I think I'm pretty sure they went to single arm pans after the 300, 300 onwards. But correct me if I'm wrong. We've of course got our nice little wheels underneath the carriage. Um, they seem to roll pretty well. We can tell they roll pretty well. They roll off the table. Uh, so, yeah, uh, pretty pretty sure by now all these trains have been aircons and stuff. So I'm not going to really say much about that. So, and having proper ventilation and stuff. So, yeah, just pretty much all this is now just to have a look at the detail of the actual model. So close up for you guys to see the detail of the model. I'll catch you all at the layout. Alright, well that took a little bit longer than I had intended, but we're finally on the layout um, after doing a few extra shots and uh, photos uh, for the fun of it, because I was, I'm was honestly more than just a little excited with um, uh, with this, uh, compared to the Australian, uh, the normal Australian stuff I now purchase. Anyways, we're going to use a little railer from, um, uh, from the train set, because uh, Hey, make things, it makes things easier. Uh, I've had to put everything back in the box again on the uh, because it was just a nightmare to tra uh, to transfer um, eight carriages on its own, so uh, on their own. So I'm just gonna. And the good thing is the couplers means I don't need to couple keep them coupled up anymore. Um, it doesn't want to leave the box, so that's great to uh, great to see. Um, the whole layout is built on a slant as well. So in, uh, basically everything I've built has been built on some sort of slant. Uh, we'll have to uh, we will have the panographs up later on to. Uh, after um, uh, in the latter latter part of the running, after once we get our close-up shots, we will have the panos put up. Uh, these couplers are not working. That's great to know. Why are they not working? Huh? Interesting. So that's a really weird thing to notice. Is the coupler? Uh, this coupler is actually bent slightly higher. Um, nothing too hard to fix. It's probably just a pa uh, uh, when it came in post it in transit. That's pretty much fixed it. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, that kind of shows how much um, care has to be taken in terms of um, in terms of postage. Is uh, they, uh, a lot of these little de uh, little things on these models do have a few, quite a few problems when it comes to um, in the post. Uh, as as you can see, I've also got the seven hundred kind of N seven hundred A sitting in the track next to it. Uh, this uh, the, 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 obviously the track isn't long enough to fit dual eight carriage trains, let alone this will end up being an eighteen carriage train, anyways. So an eighteen sixteen carriage train, which is going to cause even more problems. But uh, for now, the um, uh, I'm just sitting a five carriage train there just to make it look a bit nicer, because uh, I'm pretty sure they would have ran uh, together at some point. Uh, oh, that's a random thing I didn't realise and I forgot to say in the earlier part is there are traction tyres on the um, power unit compared to the other uh, power unit on which is this one here there, uh, which didn't have traction tyres this does have traction tyres this was a also a little weighty compared to the um, uh, previous one so it's kind of surprising I don't think it really needs it but hey, not the worst thing to have um, having traction tyres uh, now, because the hash traction ties is nowhere as easy to move it, so I will power it away. And we can start loading on the next carriages as it just slowly moves away further than I needed it. At least it will act as a, a quite a good buffer stop as well, because uh, now that there's uh, now that the power unit's on, you really put this on that side, so this side, especially seeing the platforms should be here. And the end of the train, now we finally have our distinctive bullet train nose on this end. We can put that away. Uh, I've also powered the layout uh, backwards, so that's always great. So reverse is actually forwards in terms of carriage one. So take it as you will. As you can see, we've got, I think the headlights should be working. You've got your, um, you got your uh, white headlights on the front, on uh, in the forward, this, and you got your reds on the reverse. Uh, so yeah, um, we can see the also the liveries between the two. The two uh, is the series zero does have a more creamy effect compared to the other. So I'm just going to pick the camera up and just shift it so that we can have a closer look. Uh, and let's just power it up so we can see the. So that's the um, forward lights and the reverse lights. 
Yeah, not too bad. It's only a little layout for now. One day this might get a little bit bigger, but for now it's going to say it's really going to be small. Not that I really have the room for it because the double O layout, not double O, HO layout is underneath it. So this actually has to is temporary. It's a temporary layout that's just fit on top of it. So yeah, with the box out of the way, let's get her on the move. Well, I think that should be that. Uh, honestly, having a little bit too much fun with the um, uh, Series Zero right here. Anyway, so, what can I say for conclusion? It seems to run pretty well. Hasn't properly ran in yet, so, um, you need to make full judgment on how it's operational. It seems to be honestly, she's running immensely smoothly, and when she comes back around, I'll slow her right down, and she runs at a pretty good slow speed operation as well. Um, Lower right down. Pretty good for um, DC operation. It's probably not the best for it, but I could probably go a little slow as well. Yeah, not too shabby for so uh, for a DC model. Yeah, so again, I am just using the standard power pack that comes with um, Kato's train set. So, um, which I believe I correct does have a P uh, PIM or a POM or whatever they call it. So yeah, well. I think in the conclusion, it's honestly a very nice model for what it is, obviously, for obvious reasons. Uh, definitely a nice addition to my collection, to my slowly but surely growing collection. And yeah, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed joining me for another Model Train review video. There should be some more coming along very soon. Um, sorry, a Model Train unboxing video. I have to remember that these are separate to the review videos now. Uh, yeah, for first time startup seems very good. 
we will be back at some point within probably the next 12 months with a full review of both it and the extra carriages and hopefully hopefully on a bigger layout as well yeah thank you all for watching i hope to see you all next time